It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report. Hi everybody, when the cold winds of winter begin to chill our region, it spells the beginning of one of the most exciting times to catch one species of fish across the Southwest. Winter time is catfish time. It's the time of the year when some of the largest blue catfish get caught all across our region. And on this week's show, we're gonna teach you a little bit about how to go out and catch some of your very own. And to help us do that, I've enlisted the services of a guy that knows more about catfishing than I've ever known in my whole life. He is Chad Ferguson. He's right down there. He's already got his boat launched. He runs North Texas Catfish Guide Service. He guides on several lakes across the state of Texas. He is a catfish expert. So it's gonna be a great half hour coming up. And while we're out on Lake Louisville today, just north, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, we're gonna experiment around with this lake. It's one of the best catfish lakes in our region. While we're doing that, we're taking you around the Southwest for your latest fishing reports from Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas freshwater, and along the Texas Gulf Coast. Also this week on the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, we'll be showing you one of the best marsh fisheries in the entire state of Louisiana for redfish and speckled trout. This week's Coast to Catch of the Week, we're gonna show you a giant trophy redfish caught by one of our viewers. We'll have all of our weekly features coming up. While I get the Nitro Z8 launched, here's Julie with your weekend planner. Hi everybody, I've got positive news for you weekend anglers. The Salooner tables are showing good fishing conditions on both Saturday and Sunday. The tables indicate peak activity will start at 9.05 a.m. on Saturday and 9.55 a.m. on Sunday. The sun will be rising at 7.41 and setting at 6.40. And we are approaching a full moon on Monday, so nights will be very well lit. Stay with us, we've got fishing updates from around the Southwest, and I'll be back with this week's Whataburger at the Pro. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Fish your best in a Nitro by Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. Quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. By Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Engineering for angling. Birds around. Wind is really starting to kick up too. There's a bite, there's a bite. Look at my rod tip. He's got it, 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 he's got it. Got him. All right. Hey, welcome back everybody. You're on your Southwest Outdoors report. We're on Lake Louisville today for the beginning of the blue catfish season. Lakes all around our region, the colder the weather gets, the more the big blue catfish bite. I hope this is a blue cat right here. We're about to find out because I'm about to get him up where I can see him. Oh yeah, here he is. Look at this. Look at this. There's a good one to start off with. Don't get him in that other rod right here. Oh, nice cat right there. I'm going to get the net out for this one. Come in here. Come in here. Come in. <laughs> All right. That it's a good start right there. That's no absolute trophy monster, but that's a good blue catfish right there. That's exactly the kind of fish that we've been talking about. And let me show him to you here. All right, there is what a blue catfish looks like. That's just a good specimen. You can see the blue color. Call them high fin blues right there. That is a good sized fish, a good eater. In fact, I'm gonna eat a few fish today, so I'm gonna put that one in the live well. That circle hook you can see did its job and hooked him right in the top of the head. In fact, oh, I got it out pretty easy. I'm gonna show you that rig here in just a second that you can use to catch these blue catfish. I'm gonna slip this fish in the live well right quick. Now we mentioned Chad Ferguson and his catfish guide service at the beginning, and I wanna show you his personal rig for catching blue catfish, and this will work all over our region. It starts off with a, a swivel, and it's on a sliding barrel, so it slides up and down your line, and then what he's done is taken real heavy monofilament line, it's probably 100 pound test, 
put a bunch of quarter ounce barrel sinkers on it, put a something here on the end, a knot or something to hold them, but you've got real heavy weight to hold us in the wind. Then under that, you've got a little rubber bumper here to keep it off your knot. Then we've got a uh, swivel, just a regular old barrel swivel. And then behind the swivel, we've got about two feet of heavy leader. Then next, we put a bobber float on there and it's pegged in at both ends. And what that's gonna do is hold this up off the bottom. Then we've got a red circle hook, like I showed you that was right in the roof of that catfish's mouth. So that's the rig right there. And the principle of it is the weight drags along the bottom. And then here comes the bobber floating a dead shad up behind it. And that's the rig for the blue catfish. Now, I'm gonna tell you about what kind of water you need to be looking for and some lakes that you can do this in. And we'll visit with Chad Ferguson coming up here in just a few minutes. But first, let's get you started on your fishing reports from around the region. Here is Brian Hughes with your Texas Freshwater Report. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by A1 Locksmith. Now one thing I don't want to worry about when I'm on the boat or in the blind is the safety and security of my home and family. Let A1 install a security system that will alert the police or fire department automatically should there be a problem while you're in the field. Now this week Lake Austin has produced another and the first of this year's Cheryl Lunkers. At over 14 pounds Bennett Cowan used a 17 inch hand poured worm to catch this monster bass, lending credence to the theory, bigger bait, bigger bass. Also in Austin, on Ladybird Lake, formerly known as Town Lake, the Core Health Foundation is accepting funds to build a wheelchair accessible fishing pier. If you'd like to get more information or help with this great project, go to corehealthfoundation.org. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. Be sure and click on my picture on the website for more on the Lone Star Lakes and your discount coupon to A1 Locksmiths. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report. Pick up a copy of the November issue now on sale on newsstands just in time to kick off hunting seasons and fall fishing. Plus check out our Christmas subscription special. For the very best monthly coastal and inland fishing information, plus year-round hunting tips, subscribe securely to Texas Outdoors Journal at the website on the screen. Well, before this week's report, I want to tell you about a great day I spent on the water with Southwest Outdoors Report viewer Pat Donovan of Saginaw, Texas. Pat won the coastal fishing trip, and we spent a day dealing with high winds, but caught some interesting fish. While many of the fish caught while drifting shorelines and grass flats were undersized, the variety was impressive. Dunneman caught speckled trout, redfish, sheep's head, mangrove snapper, mutton snapper, a sea robin, and a snook. What a day. Now to this week's report. Well, with the stronger winds blowing, high tides have pushed redfish and bait deeper into marshes and back lakes. The key is to set up at the mouths of these areas to intercept fish as north winds drop water levels and dump bait and fish back into the bays. Birds continue to work from West Matagorda all the way up to Sabine. Fish are moving shallow on the mid coast with trout just now starting to leave grass beds and redfish still somewhat scattered. On the lower coast, a good bite's occurring from three islands all the way south to Mexiquita Flats and Longbar. Look for the Brownsville Ship Channel to start to turn on. Just about everything from topwater lures to soft plastics and certainly live shrimp, piggies, and mud minnows has worked. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. Hey, welcome back everybody. We're on the dock at Lake Louisville trying to get out of a 30 mile an hour wind out there just for a minute. Visiting with Chad Ferguson, the man who knows more about blue catfish than anybody in my lifetime that I've ever met. And Chad, uh, you're headed into the time of year when you're going to catch those big blue cats. How cold does it need to get before the real trophies start biting? Well, the colder the better. Um, yeah, I generally use Thanksgiving as the mark for when things really start to get good. Um, there'll be some bigger fish show up before then, but for things to really get consistent, then Thanksgiving's kind of the mark. And then, you know, all throughout the winter, the colder the, the water gets and the nastier the weather is, generally the better the fishing is. Now you've got a website where you're teaching people how to catch catfish. Tell us a little about that. 
yeah, it's uh, learntocatchcatfish.com. And, uh, you know, basically it's articles, videos, podcasts, all kinds of catfishing information for all experience levels and uh, basically everything anybody would ever need to know. It's been a great day so far. We're going to try it a little bit more, but right now we're taking you up to Oklahoma. And here's Gary Dallahan with this week's fishing reports. Hey, I think I've got me a brand new favorite crappie fishing technique. It's called dock shooting. You use your rod and reel a lot like you would a bow and arrow to shoot your bait back up underneath cover, especially around bow docks. It's a deadly crappie fishing technique. My instructor was Lee Pitts. Show me exactly how you do this technique. I want to share that information with you. It's something you've got to try because it's catching a lot of fish in Oklahoma right now at this particular time. One of the key things in dock shooting is uh, the presentation that you make is coming up and positioning your boat just right. Get back where you're not right up in your, your strike zone where you can stay off of it and reach it. The biggest thing, when you grab this bait to shoot it, grab it by the bend of the hook here where you're not grabbing the head or the tip of the hook where it's going to get you when you try to release it. Load your rod up good. I like to keep mine about six to eight inches in front of my reel. That way when you bend that rod over, everything's in front of you that you're working with. You've got a little bit of bow in your line and it's like a pendulum. You let it fall, keep tension in it. And the key thing is watch your line, watch the, uh, if it moves side to side or your line jumps in, you go ahead and set the hook because it's, it's not gonna be a real aggressive strike sometimes. You may just feel a little tick, but uh, this bait right here, when it's free falling through there, he's gonna get it. So the thing is keep it low, but the biggest thing is don't overwork it. For more information about it, including equipment, click on my photo on the Southwest Outdoors Report webpage. I have some information posted there for you to check out. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. This week on your Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, I'm going to show you one of the all-time classic fisheries in southeast Louisiana for redfish and trout. It's a place that you hear our own Cajun Phil talking about all the time. It's the Hopedale area east of New Orleans. So let's locate it for you right now on my Lawrence HDS-10 and you can see that the Hopedale area is east and south of New Orleans and it's out State Highway 46. You branch south onto 624 and the very small town of Hopedale is located here. Now south of there in all directions you can see a whole world of lakes, bays, and canals that are all loaded with trout and reds. It's one of the most fertile fisheries in all of Louisiana. Now Hopedale is the access point for all of it, but you do need a guide if you go there for the first time. And Cajun Phil can direct you to a good one. You simply go to his webpage on the Insider Fishing Report page of our website to contact him and he will put you in touch with a good guide out of the Hopedale area. And that's this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. Stay with us, the man himself, Cajun Phil, is up next along with Kevin for this week's Louisiana Fishing and Lake Reports. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest, by Lawrence and the all new HDS Gen 2 with Structure Map Overview, by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. By Whataburger, proud to serve it, hot and fresh, 24 hours a day. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. There's one right here. There's one right there. All you do is turn the handle, he's got it, he's got it, and just start turning it like that. Got him. All right, hey, welcome back everybody. Blue cat fishing today. Oh, this is not a big one at all, small fish. Oh, there's, there's one hitting this one, there's, there's one hitting this one. He's got it, 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 got him. Got two. All right, got two catfish. Let's see if they're both blues, they're both small. Okay, there's one of them. Let's get this other one up. And I'll try to hoist them both in at the same time. Here we go. Yep, I don't even need the net on them. All right. All right, two blue cats right there, small ones. Actually, one of those may be a channel. Hey, we're in the good catfish time of the year starting now. As you heard Chad Ferguson say, Thanksgiving is really the beginning of the good catfish season. That'll make a 
pretty nice mess. We've actually caught two or three others about this same size, so the catfish do seem to be biting today, even though the wind is howling. Let me tell you here right quick a couple of things. I like to fish anywhere from 10 to about 20 feet of water is ideal for these catfish in the fall. And then once we get into the really cold weather months, they're gonna go even deeper than that. Now, let me show you a list of lakes that you can catch blue cats in, big ones across our region, starting in the south. Lake Conroe and Livingston are both real good lakes to do this exact same technique. Then moving a little bit further up, you've got Richland Chambers and Cedar Creek. Then moving a little further north, you've got Texoma, Lake Eufaula, Fort Gibson, Grand Lake. It is by no means an exhaustive list. There are a bunch more blue catfish are very prolific in the southwest part of the country right here in our region. They're accessible for you to catch and you could catch a giant in these upcoming winter months. Let's move along now and check in with the next fishing and lake reports. Let's go to Cajun Phil and Kevin in Louisiana. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Fishing Report. I'll tell you what, let's start off with some bass fishing. Talk to Joe Jocelyn, guide up with Salida Bend. Joe says Cajun right now, the bass are moving into their fall pattern. They're coming up in the shallower water. Three foot of water seems to be a real good key right now to Salida Bend. Joe said spinner baits, strike pro flapjacks are working really well, shallow water, prank baits are working really well, and also the wacky worm is doing good. But you know what? The bass are shallow, the white perch are deep. He said if you've got any type of tree tops or any type of submerged vegetation at 20, 25 foot of water, he said the white perch are really ganging up there. That's a good sign. Let's talk about tuna fishing right now down in Venice, Louisiana. Lots of reports of big giant yellowfin and bluefin tuna coming in right now in Venice, Louisiana. Also, if you want big giant bull reds, they're right offshore, right in the Gulf of Mexico. Throw that old Strike Pro topwater lure, you're gonna catch some giant, giant redfish. And for the tuna, they're catching them on tuna poppers. Tell you what, let's go to Captain Kevin right now for an up-to-date report from Calvary Lake. Captain Kevin, how's it going, buddy? Here at Cajun Paradise Lodge and Charters, we went out today, we caught a bunch of big old redfish. The redfish are really tearing it up in the shallow waters of the marsh. They got some trout working under the birds. They're coming off live shrimp. Still catching a few on soft plastics over the reef. But I tell you what, for Captain Kevin and my crew here, happy fishing. May God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Mercury, the official outboard of the Southwest Outdoors Report for 10 years running. By XI, start positive, stay positive. By Lose Reels and Rods, feel the difference. And by Onyx Personal Flotation Devices and Rainwear, keeping you safe on the water. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right to our Water Burger Ask the Pro. The question this week comes to us from Al in Lafayette, Louisiana, who asks, what is the best knot to tie when adding fluorocarbon to braided line? For the answer, we visited this year's Toyota Texas Bass Classic at Lake Conroe and caught up with Gerald Swindle. You know, when I'm going to tie my braid to my floral, the best knot that i found over the years, day in and day out, is a double uni. Uh, there's several different knots to try. That one's always been the strongest. I have never broke it where the two combine. If you're going to break your line, it always break at the hook, but not the knot. So try the double uni when putting braid to floral. Thanks, Gerald. If you have a question, we would love to find out the answer for you. Just go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, follow the Ask the Pro link, and let us know what you'd like to ask one of our pros. Now here's Barry with the Costa Catch of the Week. Congratulations to this week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest. She is Brandy Metis of San Marcos, Texas, and she's showing her personal best redfish, 31 inches, caught in Aransas Bay down on the Texas Gulf Coast. She wins her choice of any pair of Costa sunglasses, and you can see all of those this way. You go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. In the middle of the page, you click on the Costa logo and it will take you to their website. You can see all of their frame styles and lens styles, including this month's frame style of the month, Jose. Also at our website, you can go on the right side of the page and you can send in your big fish photo and have a chance to be the Costa Catch of the Week winner. You click in that box. Once you do that, you need to join and become a member of our fan club. It's always free. Once you do that, you fill out the form, send us your photo, and you could be next week's winner. 
Next up, it's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, the right gear to catch trophy blue catfish. You'll need a heavy action rod and bait cast reel, big line, at least 20 pound test, and here are the components, the terminal tackle you'll need to rig up Chad Ferguson's special blue catfish drifting rig. The components from your left to right are a big snap that slides freely up and down your line, a barrel swivel, a bobber with plugs on either end, several quarter ounce barrel weights, one more swivel, a rubber stop, and a big five or six aught red circle hook. Well, thanks for joining us for this week's show and our thanks to Chad Ferguson, North Texas Catfish Guide Service, learntocatchcatfish.com. That's where you'll find all the information you heard about on today's show. And if you'd like to book Chad for a guide trip for a trophy blue catfish this winter. Don't forget, our show will be on next Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. There are no conflicts on next week's show, so we will air at 10.30. The show replays 8 o'clock Saturday morning, and you can always catch the latest episode of our show, front page of the website, southwestoutdoorsreport.com. From there, that's the Grand Central Station where you can link to all of our episodes at our YouTube channel. And if you're away for a couple of weeks, you can always catch up at the YouTube channel. And you can also link to our Facebook page from our website and get lots of content, photos, video, fishing news and information that you won't get here on the television show. From Lake Louisville, Texas, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun, bye-bye y'all.